Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. This time we are going to be checking out the upcoming Tier 10 British medium tank replacement, the Centurion Action 10. The departure of the FV4202 will be very good news for a lot of you who were disappointed with that vehicle after playing the Centurion 7-1, which is certainly a fan favourite. This thing has a reliable 105mm cannon and a lot of you will be very happy to hear that this is now the fastest British medium tank that is higher tier than the Cromwell. Hang around, I've got some gameplay coming right up after I quickly run down the statistics of this tank, and if you have no interest in this vehicle, then hang around anyway, and I'll let you know how you can take these out effectively on the battlefield when they come in World of Tanks Patch 10. So the Centurion Action 10 gets its name from its turret, which was going to be a prototype to be mounted on the Centurion Mark 7 chassis. While one prototype of this turret was indeed mounted on a Centurion Mark 7, and an additional prototype was used in ballistics tests, the vehicle never actually entered service. It has a gorgeous model embellished with lots of features, including this searchlight up here, which is certainly a prominent feature of the tank. And also the netting on the back here does look rather awesome. This is a beautiful vehicle. But none of that really matters. Let's get stuck into the stats of the Centurion Action 10. So this vehicle has a standard 1,950 hit points, but it weighs a whopping 55 and a half tons when it's fully equipped, making it the second heaviest medium tank at tier 10. With only the E50M going to be able to outperform this in a, a pure ramming engagement. But thankfully this vehicle gets a whopping engine power of 1,040 horsepower, meaning that the specific power of this tank isn't too bad, it's 18.76. Now while that is worse than the FE4202, I did some digging around in the statistics of this vehicle, at least the hidden ones, and it's got better ground resistances than the FE4202. So for all intents and purposes, this vehicle has pretty much the same kind of mobility as an FE4202. But this is really where the good news is for the Centurion Action 10. It's the main difference between this vehicle and the previous FE4202. And that is the top speed limit, which is 53 kilometers an hour. That's absolutely gigantic for the new tier 10 British medium tank. As many of you guys will know, that's the biggest weakness of the Centurion, the Centurion 7-1, and indeed, the FV4202. And thankfully this vehicle retains that awesome traverse speed of 50 degrees a second. Now hull armor wise this vehicle is worse than the FV4202, which you'll know was very low profile and the frontal armor was very angled indeed. However it's not a disaster, frontally the, the plate is 120 millimeters. You do get this rather tall and fat lower plate on the vehicle that you're going to have to hide unless you want to lose your health very quickly indeed. The side armor is garbage, it's 50 millimeters, and the rear armor is even worse, it's 31. So if you get the back of one of these, feel free to fire high explosive rounds for maximum impact. Now the turret armor on this tank is very interesting indeed. On paper it says it's 198 millimeters thick on the front, 152 on the side and 95 at the rear. And when we compare that to the turret of the Centurion 7-1, which is 152 at the front, 88 at the side and 88 at the rear, it does look a lot better. However, there is quite a prominent cupola on this vehicle, but it's a little tricky to hit in most situations, not like some of the disastrous cupolas that we've been seeing coming into the game recently. As there is currently no 3D model viewer, which which has implemented the Centurion Action 10 into its resource. I made a training room with the Pepmeister and we tested it out and here are the results. So here I am in the Centurion Action 10 and I'm about to shoot Peppity who is also in a Centurion Action 10. Let's take a look to see how the armor holds up. One right through above the gun. Another one right above the top left of the turret. One also in through the cheeks from the front. However, this time a ricochet in the top corner. Another one going straight through in the top left. So we found out that the Centurion Action 10's turret is not able to hold up against 268mm of penetration on a level plane. Now let's take a look to see what happens when one of the Centurions is using its 10 degrees of gun depression. So here we're going to see Peppity shooting at me while I'm using 10 degrees of gun depression in the Centurion. So the first shot goes onto the top of the turret and ricochets off. That one Another ricochet to the top of the turret. That one didn't go through. A ricochet off the 120 millimeters of hull armor. We didn't even scratch them. And a ricochet just below the gun. That one didn't go through. A ricochet off the cheeks. That 
So in a hold down position such as this, when using the 10 degrees of gun depression this vehicle has, it truly is a beast frontally. However, I wanted to do some more testing on this weak point that we found when we're on a level playing field. So I dropped the penetration down. Now we're going to be using an SU-12244, which has got 217 millimeters of penetration with its APCR rounds. So let's see how the 217 millimeters of penetration on the APCR rounds of the SU-12244 can fare against the Centurion Action 10's turret. First shot goes right through the top. Second one, however, bounces in exactly the same spot. Third one goes right through. Fourth one bounces. So far, a 50-50 success rate. The fifth one bounces. But the sixth penetrates so it looks like that top bar is a 50 50 where the 217 millimeters of penetration is going to be able to go through it now let's try underneath the gun as we can see goes right through and the second one goes right through doesn't look like it was my lucky day so we found out that the centurion 71's turret has a weak point here of which as low as 217 can go straight through it Whereas above the gun is more of a 50-50 due to the angling, whether it's going to be able to penetrate. And so if you want to use the Centurion Action 10 effectively, you want to use as much of the 10 degrees of gun depression that this vehicle gets as possible to accentuate the armor and give yourself the best chance of avoiding damage. So how about the gun on the Centurion Action 10? Well, it's exactly the same as the FE4202 was. Just under 7 rounds a minute with 268 millimeters of penetration on its standard rounds, 390 alpha damage, 0.32 accuracy, and 2.1 seconds aim time. Compared to all the other medium tanks, this is a very middle ground. Not the highest DPM, not the best aim time, not the best accuracy, but certainly not the worst. It certainly is a lot better than the M48 Patton's gun, however. And it will reliably cut through pretty much every single tank that you can meet frontally. But if 268mm of penetration isn't enough, there's been a big change for the Centurion Action 10 which is the premium rounds on this vehicle. Previously, they were Hesh. High explosive squashed head ammunition with 210 millimeters of penetration, I believe, that did more alpha damage than the standard rounds. They did 480. And those rounds were very nice for cutting through light to medium armored targets. However, the lack of heat or premium APCR rounds made the FE4202 very bad at dealing with very heavily armored targets. However, that is a thing of the past as it now gets heat rounds which have got 330 millimeters of penetration. And so if you're willing to quadruple your ammo costs, you are going to be able to butter even the most heavily armored tanks like the mouse. But fortunately, Wargaming didn't remove the cheap hesh on this vehicle. Its high explosive rounds have got very good penetration of 105 millimeters, which means that you can rip apart lightly armored targets with higher reliability than the high explosive rounds on other vehicles. A speciality that I put to good use on my Conqueror and the FV215B already. And so that about does it, apart from the fact that this vehicle also has a very nice turret traverse speed, 48 degrees, which is 8 degrees better than the FV4202, but it retains the excellent view range of 410 meters, which means that if you're so inclined, you could probably get away with using vents on this tank and not coated optics, and still get a very decent view range. And so that about does it for the stats. Let's see how this vehicle performs in some gameplay. Time to roll out. So here we go. We're playing on mines and we're going to do something that an FB4202 could only dream of. And that is to contest the hill as quickly as possible. As you can see here, we're going along the slope at 50 kilometers an hour. Lovely. Remember the FB4202, the replacement of this tank, could only manage 40 as that's its top speed limit. Now we're going at 45 upslope. You're seeing the great ground resistances and the huge engine power of this vehicle just cutting our way up this terrain. Ready to fire. And that made a huge difference here. Fair enough, we get hit by the Centurion Action 10. But if we had had the 40 km an hour top speed limit, we would have likely still been here trying to get up the slope and slammed by all of these tanks. Now, unfortunately for us, there are four artillery on the enemy team who are testing the new... Um, SPG capabilities, which haven't been changed. Yeah, I'm sure that Object 430 really got to test how his tank takes an AP shell to the butt. Dastardly artillery players really are a bane of the test server. But luckily for us, we managed to spot them. Now check out the mobility of this tank. We're able to get into position, but, you know, fairly quickly. 
But our gun handling, oh, our aim time wasn't quite good enough there to get a shot accurately into the Conqueror gun carrier. But luckily for us, he does get taken out. And so there are only two artillery on the enemy team rather than four to worry about. Now we spot a T-110 E4 who really is out of position. We see him fire at the E100 and that means that we can shoot him twice before he's able to reload. In fact, if we fire at the same time, I think that I can squeeze out three shells in this tank before he's able to, to fire at me again. We take a quick look. He turns his turret. I feel fairly confident to shoot his lower plate before he gets us. Poor guy. Now just get an idea of the gun handling in this tank. What the aim time is like, what the reload is like, what the dispersion is like. Now, it, it didn't feel that good to me, but then again, I guess I've been spoiled recently. I, I, the last tank that I was playing on the test server was the T-22. Actually, it wasn't the test server, was it? I was playing the T-22 medium tank, and that has excellent gun handling. Centurion Action 10 fires a heat round at us, and we put one into his hull armor. I'd say overall that this gun it, it is very dependable. It's not de as dependable as, for example, it is on the Centurion 7-1, considering that's a Tier 9 gun. But you do feel that your aim time is just a little bit better than on the Tier 9 British medium tank. So our hull is gigantic, as we can see there. It's so hard to miss this tank's hull. It really is one of the downsides to the, the Centurion. And we take a big heat round from the Object 268. But we're able to fairly reliably hit that tier 10 Soviet tank destroyer, putting him to a one-shot. Now both teams are melting. What are we going to do? Well, I want to try and take out this Object 268 who angles his tank too much. Nice easy kill for us there. Can we get the Object 261 as well? Got to find a tiny little shot. Yeah! Got him as well. Great result. So that 0.32 accuracy on the Centurion Action 10 really shining in this gameplay. Boy, does this look like a beautiful tank. We hit the E50M in the butt and then quickly dodge the left to see if he's going to return fire. But he seems to be too excited about taking out the artillery, meaning that we can finish him off. And from here on, it's up to the, the T10, which is the IS-8 replacement on our team to finish off the artillery. So five quick kills in a four minute game on mines. It really was a pain to play the test server again. It was really awesome that Wargaming allowed me to test all three of those premium tanks on the live server, as that really is the only way to get a true indication of how a tank is going to perform. Nevertheless, considering this is the hull of the Centurion 7-1, which I and I bet a lot of you have played the tank to death, combining the gun performance of an FB4202, there isn't really too much to test here except for the turret armor, which I've already done, and the mobility, which as we've seen, gives us a lot of opportunities to play maps a little differently and a bit more aggressively in the new tier 10 British medium tank. We received 77,000 credits for this game and 1,751 experience points with our high caliber medal for our 4,600 damage. And using the excellent view range of this tank, we were also able to get nearly 2,300 points of assistance. And so let's draw some conclusions on the Centurion Action 10 compared to the FB4202, which it is replacing. Well, the gun performance is the same. I'd say the turret armor feels pretty much the same as the FB4202. Maybe it's actually a little bit stronger, but you do get this extra cupola on top that you're going to have to worry about. Hull-wise, however, it is a gigantic target. I would far rather have the chassis of the FB4202. But with the Centurion chassis comes this whopping great engine, which allows us to have so much more mobility than the FB4202 did, giving us far more opportunities about positions that we can take and tanks that we can avoid. And so personally, my feelings on this tank are, are pretty much neutral. There are some areas which it is better than the FV4202, but you do have to make some sacrifices to be able to gain this extra mobility. All in all, considering that the Centurion 71 is a very popular tank, and this really just feels like a, a step up in performance compared to the Centurion 71, I think this will be a popular change for people who love the Centurion 71, but it will also be disheartening for people who love the FV4202 for its tight, 
compact Ridgeline Warrior-esque vehicle. And don't worry if you really did love the FV4202, it's still going to be in the game. However, it's going to be changed to a tier 8 premium medium tank, and we currently have absolutely no idea whether the tank is going to be free or whether you're going to have to earn it in a mission or just purchase it. But if you're currently an FV4202 driver, don't worry, you will be picking up the Centurion Action 10 as a replacement tank completely for free. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments what you think about the Centurion Action 10. Do you think that it's a worthy replacement for the FE4202? Or maybe you're an FE4202 driver and you really don't like the look of it and you're disappointed that one of your favorite tier 10 medium tanks is going to be replaced and dropped down to tier 8. And stay tuned to the channel, guys. I've got a load more videos coming up on what will be featured in World of Tanks Patch 10. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.